In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, sometimes I think the church can be rather a buzzkill. Right? Today is Valentine's Day. And here we are, our church, for Ash Wednesday, one of the most kind of down days of the church year. And while people are singing hearts and flowers right now, God bless you for being here. <laughs> I was at Starbucks this morning kind of giving out ashes to people that could not make it tonight or people in Starbucks. And so it was really interesting to walk in to get my tea this morning and have ashes on my forehead. The first thing everyone does is like, oh gosh, there she is again. <laughs> But she's got ashes, and then they all realize, they look around at each other, it's Ash Wednesday. They have no idea. And so I'm getting my drink, and I'm like, happy Ash Wednesday, happy Valentine's Day, and they just thought that was hilarious. So it is kind of a cumbersome day today to have Ash Wednesday. So as I was getting my drink, I sat down, and this young man catches me, and he goes, oh, it's Ash Wednesday. He goes, I'm going to go to church tonight. You reminded me. I said, I'm just a walking advertisement today. <laughs> and if you want to get someone really scared of you, you go hand out ashes at Starbucks. They kind of erased the corner where I was at. They're like, don't look, don't look. So I think it was pretty fun. And so I think the bottom line is today we're reminded of our mortality. We're reminded from dust we came and for dust we will return, right? So I want to tell you a quick story about how these ashes really can affect um, and why we wear them. Even though our gospel message today says, don't be like the hypocrites, and, you know, let your alms be seen. But on today, the church, the universal church, has said, today you show that you're a penitential person. Today you show you're marked with the cross. The one day of the year where we kind of are allowed to say, I am a Christian. So there was a, a, a series of court cases I was at. I had a girlfriend who uh, was going through a very, very nasty divorce, and it was nine years. This guy dragged her through the mud. It's the ninth year, like the ninth inning, right? We're in the jury trial, and it's Ash Wednesday. And she and I traditionally always went to get ashes on Ash Wednesday together. So without fail, at 8 o'clock in the morning, we'd go to church, get our ashes, dash off the court, 9 o'clock. And uh, everyone's kind of looking at us, right? That kind of look. Oh, it's Ash Wednesday. Oh, it's Ash Wednesday. <laughs> so the court case carried on, and it was very dramatic. And we thought, now, when you're, uh, I guess it would be the plaintiff, Help me here. She was defending herself. She's a defendant. Here's my lawyer. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, you want to be on your best behavior when there's a jury and you want to, and she comes out, she's hauling me over to the bathroom. Should we wash these off? I go, no way. She goes, but what if, I go, calm down. So they break for lunch, and what do you know, after lunch, the judge comes in with ashes <laughs> and half the jury. <laughs> I'm telling you, she never felt better. <laughs> the sign was there, and she won her case in the sign. So what is the secret password here? What is the secret code that we were getting? Let me explain, because I think that um, a lot of Episcopalians can gather from this, too. So the secret code, of course, is the cross. From dust we come, from dust we shall return. And many theologians will actually go farther and say we are cosmic dust. Because intergalactically, right, the universe started with dust, with stars, with cosmic dust. And so I love that in that, you know, we can consider ourselves from dust. Joseph says God created us out of dust. Well, the cosmos came together and God created us. And I think that is really, really the best way to look at the ashes. 
However, it does stem from our tradition in the Old Testament. When anyone sinned, remember some the kings would actually repent of some of their wrongdoing if the prophets went after them, and they would rent their clothes, right? Put sackcloth on and they would heap ashes on their head. So that's part of the other thing. You would repent, you heap ashes on your head. Now, our ashes actually, because someone asked me, what's the formula? These ashes are from Palm Sunday Palms from last year. So as Jesus is entering Jerusalem with palms, as his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, right, to be king, they thought they would crown him king, but no, he was going to the cross. So you see all these interconnected, the ashes are the product of palms from Palm Sunday from last year. We recycle things. We're good Episcopalians. <laughs> I would say that Lent is the time set aside in our church year for 40 days before Easter, not counting Sundays. So if you're giving up chocolate, you can eat chocolate on Sundays. But it's a 40-day wilderness journey just as Jesus was tempted in the desert, right? So it's 40 days to Easter. And the 40 days is our time to have self-examination. To look and see if there's anything in our life that is holding us back. To look at things done and things left undone. Which I find most of the time is more the case. Things left undone. And so we, during the Lenten season, take the 40 days and really do self-examination as a penitential exercise. Now, I was driving here tonight and I thought, you know, this would be a good time to have a Lenten discipline. So if you really want to know the journey of the cross, this is what we do. The 40 days, we really concentrate on Jesus at his baptism and we go to the cross on Good Friday, right? So I thought, well, to refresh the Episcopalians, because I know you Baptists have your Bible and you read all the time. <laughs> you Episcopalians, your assignment <laughs> is to read one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, this Lent. <coughs> Won't take you long, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, same story told four different ways, right? So I'm gonna give you a hint here, Matthew, if you like storytelling, you're going to read Matthew. If you want just the facts and your type A personality, read Mark. Luke, if you just want kind of, you know, give me the, give me the flowery part, read Luke. John, if you're mystical and you're mysterious and you like flowery language, read John. So that's your assignment. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Or Lent. Shouldn't be too hard, right? So I think that as we um, progress into Lent, there are also times that we come and we can do confessions, and that's a good day is Good Friday. So I will be available Good Friday for confessions. And I'll tell you why that's important too. I cannot tell you how many times someone has come to me and they've been carrying a burden for so long. Right, Pastor Perry? They carry the burden of what they've done. And through a confession to a pastor, a clergy person, that has to keep it completely confidential, you'd be amazed how much freer you are. And so I would encourage you to think about that as part of your discipline this Lent. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be here tonight with you and to let us share Lent and Ash Wednesday with you at the beginning. And please know that St. James the Great is so grateful to be with you tonight. Amen. Amen.